right. Hello and welcome to another Expert Insight interview. My name is John Golden from Sales Pop, online sales magazine and Pipeliner CRM, coming to you as usual from San Diego. And today I'm joined by Tony Guarnacha, who is in Connecticut. How are you doing, Tony? Great. Great to have you. Uh, have me on the show today. Yeah, no, it's uh, my pleasure and thank you for coming on. And Tony's helped thousands of businesses survive crises over the year, whether over the years, whether it's 9-11, the Great Recession, big company acquisitions, uh, and he helps businesses navigate uncertainties. And let's face it, the current crisis we're in is probably, is uncertainty on steroids, right? Because yeah. normally, I mean, if there's a recession or something, you always think, oh, well, there's, there's an end in sight or there's going to be something that's going to happen. I think we have a global collective level of uncertainty that we've you know, never experienced before. So yeah. what is your, when you start to talk to businesses right now, especially businesses that are in flux or in complete crisis, I mean, how do you, how do you help them even sort of take a step out of that crisis to examine what's going on? Yeah, well, I think the first step is really to break things down. And that's a lesson I learned a long time ago from my mother, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, so I asked her growing up how she survived a pandemic uh, <laughs> late in the late 1930s, because she actually went through something very similar to what we're dealing with today. So, mm -hmm. of course, back then they had polio. And yeah. so at the age of just nine months old, my mother contracted polio, could not walk until the age of 14 years old. And like I said, I said, you know, how, how do you survive that mentally, physically? What were you able to do? And how were you actually able to achieve the goal where you were able to walk in high heels uh, when you're were, you were older? And um, what she told me is to break things down, which is kind of the inspiration behind my book, Small Steps to Grow Profits. Right. So um, it's okay. So if you were advising a business right now, a small business, um, what, what should they be breaking it down into? What are the, what are the components? Yeah, there's three primary uh, areas. And going back to my mother's story, uh, mm -hmm. what they had her do was learn how to use her, her muscle, uh, muscular system, her nervous system, strengthen that. So they had her doing pottery. Then they had her uh, to the point where she was able to swim a little bit. So finally, she was able to go between two poles and walk. And really what that, what that breaks down to is really three, three big steps. The first step is to know what steps to take. So mm -hmm. many businesses neglect that part because they go right to the how, which is step yeah. number two. And then finally, the third area is actually to take the step, take action. So really the first one from a business perspective is your strategy. What is your strategy? How are you going to accomplish and what do you want to accomplish? And then the next thing is how are you going to do that? What's your plan and what specific objections objectives are you going to have and what actions are you going to take and then finally the last one is actually taking the execu uh, execution of it applying it and measuring it and kind of adjusting as you go and i guess the other thing um right now is uh is having realistic time frames right i mean not trying yeah. to look i mean right now i mean a lot of people i talk to i mean once upon a time they were you know they were doing two-year plans or one-year plan now they're doing like 30, 60, 90 day plans. And Correct. I guess part of that is, is realistic timeframes about what yes. you can do in a realistic time frame. Yes, a good goal. Well, I mean, the old uh, measurement for setting goals is SMART goals, right? Specific, mm -hmm. measurable, actual, realistic, time bound. That still holds true. So you wanna make sure whatever goal you're setting is realistic. But yes, in areas of great uncertainty, it's always a good idea to shorten that time frame because that way you can adapt and be nimble as things change because surely they're going to change. So you don't want to stick to a plan so far out that you can't adjust to it. And I guess the other part is like getting, getting people to focus because there's obviously when there's a crisis, the natural instinct is in uh, human instinct is run around like a headless chicken. Right. Right. So you want to focus. And what I found, um, I create a framework called the results loop, which you can probably see behind me. Yeah. These are really the six factors that I found drive growth in any company, any situation, whether you're in crisis or where you, whether you're looking to scale. And it's really just six things you have to focus on. Number one, the markets you're serving. Number two, the offerings, the products and services you're providing them. Number three, the value you're providing to those markets with your products and services, followed by how do you increase the number of buyers, the lifetime value or the size of those buyers. And finally, driving loyalty, getting them to come back to you again and again and provide referrals. Yeah, and um, I mean, those are, those are superb and, and very focused ones. 
And I guess there's a lot of businesses right now maybe look at that and if they look at that in, in, the, in their traditional market, they may say, oh my goodness, I can, the market I sell into is in, huge cri is in huge decline or crisis right now. So part of it is looking at, okay, how can I serve this market for where it is right now? Or maybe, maybe I can move a little adjacent. Maybe there's other places because there's, there's, there's um, verticals that are doing well right now. Absolutely. So um, there's a, a old framework that they teach in, in uh, graduate school uh, called the Ansov matrix. And mm -hmm. what Ansov looked at was really four different areas uh, in the matrix. One, can you grow new markets with existing products? Can you grow uh, new offerings into new markets? Or can you do new offerings into new markets? And so, you know, looking at those different variety of ways that can give you ideas of how you could adapt. So for instance, I have a marketing agency. We happen to serve a lot of clients in weddings, events, travel, which are probably the worst possible areas you could be into right now. So, so what I did was I looked at, I went through my loop, the results loop, and I said, okay, those markets are in decline. What markets are doing well? Well, gosh, seems like everybody and their brother is doing a podcast now. Everyone's doing virtual events. So I pivoted parts of my company to address those areas. So I created a company, a little division within my, my, my marketing agency that focuses on building podcast websites, for instance. Mm. I'm working on virtual summit now uh, with, uh, with uh, different business leaders to speak. So I pivoted my company, a real company that was in those traditional markets that were declining and moved to more of a virtual environment to adapt to where the environment is today and also where it's going. Yeah, no, and and I think that's a I, th I think that's um that, that's a superb example because you know, and actually I have I have a, a strange one myself of um not for me but I had to during this pandemic I had to travel back to Ireland um for um for a family thing a funeral and that and there um these guys had set up a business where they would live stream funerals across the world to everybody because people couldn't be there because at the time there could only be 10 people in the church at one time right sure. and things like that and they and now they're doing you know virtual masses and virtual other events like they've grown they, they can't there's so much business they don't know what to do with it and again to your point it's a business that's not necessarily going to go away after this either no no absolutely and that's and that's the to the point of what I said, where it's going. So it's almost mm -hmm. like Wayne Gretzky in his famous quote yeah. about looking not where the puck is, but where it's going. You want to position yourself to be where it's going because it's always easier to ride a wave than to create your own wave. And a lot of the success I've had in the past was simply to ride the wave at the time, mm -hmm. whether it was SEO, I rode that wave, Google AdWords, I rode that wave. And right now I'm riding the wave with virtual anything. So you, it's easier to sell with something that's already got demand put into it as opposed to trying to trying to create the demand on your own and i guess when you talk to when you talk to businesses and you and you sort of explain this to them it means that then they have to get into a kind of more positive time and mindset and uh, marshal their forces and get everybody to say okay you know things aren't great right now but here this looks like an opportunity let's just go full bore and take and take advantage of this and create some energy Correct. And, when, and that's one of the reasons why I create this framework, but also the planner. Like it's, it's, as you can see, it's literally a whiteboard. And so what you want to do is write it down and get alignment. Because if you have this great idea as a leader and you don't, you know, translate it to your, your team, it's not going to get executed on. So communicating, it's not just having the vision, it's communicating it and then ex ultimately executing it and getting a measurement feedback on that. So you want to really kind of align everybody between, behind your mission and what you want to accomplish in this new, when you're adapting. Yeah, and then obviously, as you say, is then you've got to execute, execute well, but execute, execute quickly, because now isn't the time for analysis paralysis either, is it? No, absolutely, you want to move quickly and fail fast. So a lot yeah. of times yeah. what you want to do is release something, see it gets traction, and then adapt if, if it does or it doesn't. So right now we're working on a concept for a virtual event. We try one sub market, tested it very quickly, found out it wasn't resonating. So now we dropped it. We're not trying to like make something work there. We moved in a new direction. So it's very important to not to stick to something necessarily, especially if it's not working. Get feedback as quickly as possible and then change and adapt as you go. And I think that's one a big challenge for a lot of organizations going forward because one of the things is, I mean, I always used to say to people who work for me is don't get married to your projects. Because you could invest six months, you could invest a year or more 
in a project and I could come to you one day and say, listen, there's a strategic imperative that just came up. We've got to switch gears, drop that, move over here. Mm -hmm. And that's hard for people, but you've got to be okay with it. So to your point, <laughs> even if you come up with what you think is a great idea and you start executing, it's clearly not working. It's like dump it, move on to something else. Yeah, um, yeah. Funny and, and story don't fall about into that. Don't fall into that trap of just hanging on for dear life. Yeah, funny story about that. It's not just adapting. You also have to communicate that. Because I remember when I was younger and not as wise, I was leading a large team in a Fortune 500 company, and we were developing a product. And I had, gosh, 20 developers, a whole marketing, like a big, it was a big project. Mm -hmm. And we found out it wasn't going. And so right. I made the mistake of just saying, hey, this is a sunk cost. Let's move on. That did not go over well. So you <laughs> want to make sure you're communicating it and saying, look it, this didn't fail, but we're not done. We're going to go in a different direction, but it doesn't mean that your time was wasted. We learned from it. So just when you do do that, make sure you message it appropriately. <laughs> that way you get buy-in. Yeah. Yeah. Cause people love the sunk cost message. Oh yeah. Yeah. Real, <laughs> real popular. <laughs> but at the same time, I mean, it's a very important concept for people. I mean, it's the whole concept of throwing, you know, good money after bad. I mean, sometimes you just do have to admit that you have, you know, that it didn't work, that the money, you, you invested money in it. Yes, was that money wasted? Well, not really. You learned something and hopefully, you, in your, as your point, you also um, developed something that you could adapt for something else. Correct. Yeah. So what are some of the other things that uh, companies who are in crisis right now can do to steady the ship? Yeah, I mean, one of the first things you want to do, so if I go back to my loop here, yeah. uh, if you're an uh, established company already, what I suggest you do is go backwards with the loop. So you start with loyalty. So what I was, what I have done and what I advise businesses to do is go back to your client base you have today mm -hmm. and say, and, and see if you can get some kind of recurring revenue in place. Ideally, if not get them to buy again, because your buyers you've had in the past are more likely to buy again in the future. So yes. go back to them, ask those same people for referrals, go back to your CRM system and look through and find the prospects that they enclose at whatever, reason mm -hmm. for what, what a time go back and see if they can buy and then also see if the ones you have today the clients you have today can they spend more so really focus on loyalty and size lifetime value and how do you do that well provide value the secret is to provide value so now is a great time to be starting a community reaching out to people giving away things for free whether it's ideas software tools anything that can add value and and then that will lead to sales opportunities yeah, and I, and I think that's a really important point as well is uh, because let's face it, when, th when this pandemic started, uh, you, you just got over overwhelmed with emails from people saying, oh, you know, the, this terrible crisis, hope you're doing well, hope everything, which is nice and all that, but it's, it's not very useful, right? That no. if you're going to, if you're going to reach out and, you know, to your current customers and stuff, you should be doing it with something, giving them something of use rather than just saying, hey, I'm here, hope you're doing okay. Correct. Yeah. I mean, it's a very amateur move to just do that. It's like sales one-on-one. Don't do that. You yeah. want to always, every call you make should always add value to your prospect. And it could be something simple. If you're overwhelmed with what do I do, send, send them an article that's useful. Hopefully yeah. it's something you wrote. If, you, if it isn't, then something you found online. It could be a podcast interview. It could be a video. Anything that you have provides some sort of value before reaching out. Yeah, no, 100%. And, and that's what I think is uh, will make you stand out a little bit because I think there's a fatigue set in where people just don't want to get any more of these like, oh, it's, it, life is terrible. Hope you're doing okay. Uh, nobody wants those emails anymore. No. Not that I really wanted them in the first place. No. And, uh, yeah, and, uh, and maybe is there another element that you want to pick out before we finish up? Yeah, well, I think the, the key, I hit on this briefly, but the key mm -hmm. to all this is value. Every interaction should have value. And the way I look at it is from a funnel perspective. So if you don't know the prospect, they don't know you, start with adding value by providing some sort of content. So there's always an exchange. When you're working with a prospect, there's always an exchange. So at the top of the funnel, a lot of times it's exchange of content for attention. The next level of intimacy, you're exchanging typically more valuable content for contact information. Mm -hmm. and at the end of the funnel, is an exchange of a result, an end result with money typically. And yeah. you always want to make sure you have at least a 10x return. So what's my return for my time to read your content? What's the return for buying something? Well, it's, it's the end result. So you're not selling CRM, for instance, you're selling 
the ability to, to grow your business at yes. the end of the day. Mm-hmm. And then ask that reason why. So maybe, maybe it's not even that. Maybe it's because I want to be able to build my business so I can put my kid in a great school. It's like the more you can get into the why of things with your value, the faster you'll grow and the more sustainable your business will be. Yeah, no, absolutely. And the only way you're going to get there is by curiosity and asking questions. Correct. Yeah, listen, Tony, this has been fantastic. Uh, uh, All of Tony's contact information and bio will be below this video. But before we go, Tony, please tell people a little bit more about yourself, your organization and what you do. Yeah, so I have uh, three companies. I have an agency, which I hit on. uh, But really what I'm focused now is sharing what I've learned uh, with working some of these great companies uh, with small businesses and medium-sized businesses. So I'm doing that through a training company I call uh, called Results Train and also group coaching, which is called the Results Club. Excellent. And right now I have a book coming out called Small Steps to Grow Profits where people can learn the system I just talked about. Fantastic. And when's the book come out? It's coming out. I'm planning it for my birthday, which is November 16th. So, uh, you know, hopefully I get book sales, but if not, I can at least get some, uh, you know, well wishes on Facebook for my birthday. <laughs> Absolutely. There you go. Yeah. And maybe, uh, Tony, uh, you come back around November, sometime in November, and we'll talk about your book. Yeah, that sounds great. Thank you so much. All right, great. My name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online, Sales Magazine, Pipeline and CRM. Thanks again, Tony. And I'll see you all for another interview really soon. Thank you. Yeah.